I just want to spend a bit of time talking about the times and seasons that we are living in. Okay, think about the past five years. This nation, you've all been through a lot economic collapse, political crisis, COVID 19, and natural disasters here and there. But not just Sri Lanka, but the whole world has gone through quite a riveting season. There's been a lot of pain, there's been a lot of shaking, there's been a lot of demolishing. And basically, what the prophetic voices all around the world have been saying in unison is that we have entered. Entered into an era of shaking. We have entered into an era of dismantling where God, through crisis, although crisis and death and pain, that is not from the Lord, okay? Let's get that straight. Destruction, pain, and the difficulties that you have experienced, that is not from the Lord. That is from the enemy. But what the Lord is achieving through these crises is that He is allowing the shaking and the dismantling of structures, of systems, of our Belief in even political leaders and world economy, he is shaking our attachment to these things. And shaking is not easy for anyone. As my brother said earlier, we love our comfort zones. But what the Lord achieves in our lives usually happens not in our comfort. Okay? It happens in times of shaking because times of shaking have a way of exposing our hearts. Attitudes and our attachments. And if there are things in the world that we have been banking our safety on, you will have felt those safeties, those security pillars being knocked out one by one in the past season. So times of shaking have come upon us. So, what is the usual attitude of Christians and churches in our world today? If it is a time of shaking, If it is a time of dismantling, how are we taking this season as Christians and churches? I'm very sad to say that in a majority of the Christian world, we are so pessimistic. We have accepted doom and gloom. And every time there's a bit of a world crisis, everyone starts talking about, is it the end times? Yes, it is the end times, and it has been. But there are so many pessimistic views about our future. People are Are saying, oh, the times will grow darker. Oh, we will be persecuted. And oh, we are being persecuted. Oh, Christians will be killed. And oh, the dark and evil ones will take over the world. And you know, there's a lot of fear floating around, even in churches, even within churches. And the fear tends to dominate our lives' attitudes and our thinking and our doing. So if you're not locked down by fear, The alternative, which is not such a great alternative, is you kind of go into escapism. Yeah? The response of the church and Christians these days is that of escapism. I'm just going to hide myself in the corner. I'm just going to pretend there's nothing going on outside. I'm just going to dream of going to heaven one day. And I'm just going to have to be the ostrich, put my head under the sand, and kind of believe and pray that I'm going to be protected. I'm going to be safe. I'm going to be all right. Jesus loves me. He does love you. But there is this sense of escapism where I just need to make it till I make it to heaven. So both are very passive attitudes. Fear and pessimism and escapism are actually not the right responses to the times and seasons that we are in. I am not discounting the difficulty of what you've experienced. I know what you have gone through, and the Lord has spoken to me about your suffering. It is no joke. But what I want to tell you is that fear, pessimism, escapism is actually a tactic of the enemy. And I'm very upset to see in so many churches, so many nations, the enemy has so successfully persuaded Christians that because the times are dark, all you need to do is just kind of carry on. Just pray to God, I want to be safe. I want my family to be safe. I want us to make through it just until we get to heaven. And that, my friends, is not of the Lord. Don't hear me wrong. I'm not saying that God doesn't want you to be well. I am not saying that God is not going to help your family. Wanting ourselves and our families to be well is a very legitimate thing. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God promised to us life abundant, correct? 
So it is the right thing to desire, but the problem is that that is the only thing we desire. And we live in an era where churches are preaching comfort, blessing, prosperity, come to Jesus, come to church, and you will be fine. And there is a truth in that because Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And as he draws people onto him by the finished work on the cross, he makes all of us well. We took communion today in acknowledgement of that. But we have a problem in the kind of gospel we are preaching in our church world today. The gospel that says, come, accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Now, absolutely, Jesus came to save you personally. He knows you individually, and yes, he is a personal God. But something that churches are not telling people these days is that not only are you saved so that you can live well and get that ticket to heaven, yes, it's guaranteed, but we forget that when we are born again, we are born into a kingdom. We become citizens of the kingdom of God. In other words, your citizenship status changes instantly. And whether you are Sri Lankan, whether you are Indian, whether you're Chinese or Korean like me, all of us, when we accept Jesus into our life, we are born into a kingdom of God. And what we need to understand that the kingdom of God is advancing day by day right now in this season of shaking and hardship god is not wasting this season but he is advancing his kingdom i have even heard reports from this nation that because of the difficulties you've been through because of the light that the church has become i hear that people's hearts are being open to the gospel i hear that people are coming to church hungry and thirsty and i hear that there are unprecedented levels of openness towards the church and the gospel because people see these are same people like me they're also suffering but they carry something in their lives that makes them, regardless of their troubles, reach out to love and serve someone else. So the kingdom of God is advancing even as I speak. And thus the Lord is calling us to be part of that movement of kingdom advancement. And the right response in our hearts is not to shrink back and shut ourselves out in fear and in dread, but the right response is to ask the Lord to give us eyes to see. God, I want to understand. I want to know how it is that your kingdom is advancing right now. And I want to be a part of that kingdom movement. Amen.